Am I supposed to be able to feel my in my head, Sha? Okay. Hi guys, welcome back again to my channel. My name is Tim Lodowa and on this channel I talk about movies and books and I talk about nursing from time to time. If you're um, just joining me for the first time, I want to say a very big welcome to you. Thank you for clicking on this video and deciding to watch. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. You know, I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me always to watch my video. I do not take it for granted at all. Thank you guys also for the love on my last nursing video. I've been nursing for about a year now. Thank you so much for congratulating me. Really appreciate it. I felt all the love and support. And I was like, wow, thank you guys. Today, I want to share one of my stories from nursing school about how I almost failed a class. And whew, the brass was that hit me in that time. So um, stay tuned to keep watching. All right, all right, all right. So straight to the point, this was a third year class and it was a very important core class. So in third year, usually we have about six weeks, six weeks classes because they want us to go through different rotations. So um, this was that six weeks. So we had, we had class for a week where they taught us all the material we're supposed to know for that clinicals and our clinicals were supposed to go for six weeks. So two days per week. Pretty much even three days because one day was for going to research about the patient and then the other two days would be actually being in the, in the hospital and you know taking care of those patients. So this was my a third year class. Anyways, I went into the um so let me give you <laughs> background as to what happened. So my instructor, um this was before the issue, like we would go through our diagnosis and be like nothing diagnosis and say, Oh, you know what's the problem with this patient what do you think your interventions would be and then i think i put two interventions which would be like stay ineffective ah, i'm sorry to my non-nursing on people this will be a lot of a little bit of nursing jargon but bear with me no <laughs> so like ineffective airway breathing pattern or sorry ineffective breathing pattern and ineffective airway clearance sort of um, relating to the, to the respiratory system or respiratory system depending on how you choose to call it so um we would do so i did that so i had those similar diagnoses and then i think she had corrected me and been like no they're the same thing something like that or almost the same thing and mind you these are not the exact situations but sort of to give you an idea and then the next week i would change it and be like well she told me that and then she'll shake her head and be like, you know, I told you that. And then she'll tell me, you know, that was not So it's like, okay, cool. That kind of went. So fast forward to like about the third week. So this is about the sixth shift or something like that. I was supposed to do a dressing change for a patient. And my instructor calls me to do that dressing change. So she needs to watch me and stuff and guide me through it. So I was opening the, um, the um, dressing package. And it's supposed to be a sterile fluid, but for some reason I kept contaminating my sterile fluid. I'm pretty sure I was also, you know, nervous. I'm like, oh my god, I, I hope I'm doing this right. And yeah, so I kept contaminating my field. One of my friends was also in there. <laughs> I kept contaminating my field, and actually it was a fellow was there. You guys already know us. <laughs> I was contaminating my field. I just kept saying, you're contaminating it. Get a new tree. Get a new dressing tree. You're contaminating it. Get a new dressing tree without telling me what to do. And um, I think I was repeating the same mistake over and over again. And then she just got angry. She stormed out and she was like, yeah, follow me. And so I followed her and then she was like, yeah, I'm done. It's going to call that I should go. I'll wait for her downstairs or like, oh no, that I should get off the floor. And like, it's up to me if I want to, you know, wait or go home. Anyways, pretty much just get out of the clinical. <laughs> I'm safe to practice and she you know she has like five or six other students she's watching and I should just leave the clinical and so yeah I think she also even gave me the option maybe leave me home or stay anyways so I went downstairs and I was like well if I had driven us to clinical study so <laughs> there's nothing like I had to wait you know so I waited and then after clinicals we do something called debriefing where we talk about how clinicals have gone what we liked you know what we learned and stuff like that so i just couldn't wait for all these things to be over because i just wanted to go home and 
happen why meanwhile i've just already been crying i just you know, finished my crying this thing i finished it so anyways so that happened and then i think it was now time for midterm evaluation so midterm evaluation it's like a pass or fail so there are like about six competencies where they ask you know judge if you're doing well or not things like about health safety professionalism competence things like that so she talks to me about my midterm and then she fails me for like five um and only leaves me with one that i passed something i don't remember what it was obviously that's really the midterm so i pretty much feel that midterm so and then with school you're also a student you're also supposed to give like comments about how you're doing so my comments i don't think i'd address that sterile dressing thing already and she now looked at me and she was like that i'm too eager to pass because she was asking me how i was doing and i probably was like yeah these are things i need to work on these are things that i've done and she's like i'm too eager to pass i was like help me people am i supposed to fail like is that what i'm supposed to do like am i supposed to come here to like you think this this i came here to do this six weeks to just because i want to fail because if you fail it like this it's a six credit class and it's like that's it you are going to have to do it again with the entire class and I'm like, i can't fail this class now so i mean i didn't tell her that but in my head <laughs> she's put me on a learning contract where it's like okay this is what you're doing wrong these are things i want you to work on if you don't work on them by so so and so time you know you're going to fail this um clinical so anyways fast forward to the next week she had to bring two people to i mean not two people sorry somebody else to come watch me apart from her so this other person came to watch me from like morning to 12 and this um other lady was like okay so i wasn't giving meds early and you know she should have found a couple of things that were wrong reported to my main instructor the answer was like yeah you see you're not doing okay and blah 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 and i was just like ah, okay you guys i think i had three patients then i felt so bad again i had to leave clinicals at that 12 i had to and clinicals lasted i think before or six i can't really remember six but anyways i had to just leave the floor in game ah you know, this was a tough time a tough period in my life and as something else was going on behind the scenes like personally outside of clinicals that was just killing my brain thankfully my parents were also around sort of at that period so my mom and my dad were, were around and um i'll get it i'll bring them into the gist later so so yeah so actually i can bring them into it now i think so so <laughs> my mom and dad were here with me so my mom knew what was going on and my mom's a nurse too so she would basically like open up the sterile dressing she would like teach me how to do sterile dressing at home and ah mom you are the best i love you so much thank you so um she would teach me sterile dressing she would like open it up and be like don't be afraid it happens like that initially when you're starting out you're not sure just keep practicing and then ask her about what to do stuff like that yeah and then she would you know do that she just she'll she show me what to do and be like what else am i struggling with and she try and help me through it so this was my mom moving from just being my mom to being like my nursing mentor and helping me my nursing teacher so you guys tell my mom thank you in the comments <laughs> anyway so um yeah so it was really helpful that i had my parents there to sort of be with me as my support system in that time it was such such an immense help and um support that. anyway so that was thursday so on friday again i was going and then i had to be one-to-one -one. it was not my main instructor that was watching me so she reduced my patients from three to two and then she's like let's do it so we did it and at the end of the day she was like wow amazing you did so good you guys <sighs> i couldn't tell you what i did differently that made her say that i did well and then my the instructor the extra instructor that come the day before to do a one-to-one -one, hugged me and was like yeah you see you know and i was like ah because why did i do differently i think i just did the same thing like for a while so that's why i got home that day and then i was smiling and then my mom was like in, in their family prayer they, because i had to leave them early like with my dad and my brother my mom was like she told them that she dreamt that um, i was going to come back home smiling and stuff like that <laughs> which which eventually happened so that was a good thing anyways fast forward to like you know weeks the remaining three weeks my instructor was not now as much as present that's my main instructor that told me that i'll take her to pass she was not as present as she was i think she was dealing with some um, um issues so 
she wasn't really like at work like that like that and so it was like all the instructors that were coming those instructors were so nice um and there's this particular instructor i love her and she was so i had the impression that their respira- um, respirate respirations were like 10. usually your normal is like 12 to 20 and she's like 10. and i was like ah 10. So I think I went to tell her that it, I just assessed my patient's first and she was like, I should own my assessment. That that's what I saw, you know. And this patient already had morphine. So that's yeah, so it's I could trace it to maybe the morphine was one causing her respiratory to decline. And so I told the nurse and stuff, so we got the patient up. I really felt so good because of how she told me that it's my assessment, that's what I saw. And it's not my fault, like you know, I can now actually now start to work on doing something about that assessment so she's like what's in your toolbox she actually thought a lot it was really nice to have that instructor because i felt like i was actually learning i didn't feel afraid i didn't feel intimidated and all this type of thing anyway sha i shall pass the clinical at the end of the day um so one of the things i want to say so the next semester there was another of my friend who was not doing the same exact class and was having issues with an instructor too and they put her on a learning contract and she called me and she was crying and bawling and i knew i knew how she felt like i could feel it and there's a scripture that says that um you know you comfort others with the same comfort that you have received and it just it it you know it became very realistic to me in that time i could see what she was going through and so i shared some of the things that i did when i got in that you know learning contract i went to see my advisor and i talked to her ah bless her she's such a sweetheart too and I talked to her and I was like, this is how I feel, you know, um, <laughs> so I feel, this is what I think is going on. And then she was like, oh, okay, that's okay. And then she talked to me about my confidence. I'm not losing my confidence. And so I told my friend then that one of the things that you don't want to lose here is your confidence. Because as soon as you lose it, you just, that's it. You need to know that you know your stuff and you're learning. Like it's a learning journey. So you know your stuff, just understand that. Just own it that you know your things like you know what you're doing you went to the class you, you come out this way so that was one thing oh getting your confidence so this might be for any nursing student who might be like me i'm feeling get your confidence back know that you can do it like don't feel that it's an event not necessarily your identity i think i posted something recently where i was like failure and like, don't make decisions because of like you, can, you don't treat failure pretty much as an identity choose it as an event so that's that confidence number two is see this opportunity as an opportunity it was some of the things that so i was asking my friend the channel i was like oh do you do this you do that she's like no but i had learned it along the line because of this extra one-on-one and stuff like that and that's what i've carried with me so treat it as a learning opportunity don't treat it as ha me um just embrace it as an opportunity to learn more and that you, you will do better um the third thing is identify the things that you're doing wrong. There are things as a baby nurse, as a starting out nurse, obviously there are things that you're doing wrong too. So identify those things and you know start to actively work on them. Ask questions too. Like tell your instructor to guide you, please. I don't know. This is how far I know. Like you can look up those um, policies or procedures, but also tell them that this is how far I know. Can you guide me through it? And I don't know, they're not supposed to be like they can't guide you through it. They're supposed to help you through it. I mean you might have some that might be like they won't guide you through it. But they're your teachers, that's really their job to actually, you know. Hope you to be more confident on us going forward. So I think this way the things I told her to do. Eventually she also passed her card, so I was so excited. And so I thank you so much. And my biggest lesson though was that you know comfort was like the comfort with which you have received. And um so there was that. What else really helped me during that period? Having like my family being there and people like praying for me behind the scenes and just you know, um yeah having family support was really crucial for me i needed it i was going to break down but i was so thankful that actually my parents were not physically present not even over the phone eventually so it was really helpful for me um i think that's pretty much it that's how i ended up passing that class i don't know if there's anything i wanted to say that i might be forgetting yeah that's how i um, ended up passing i still had another learning contract in my last preceptorship but you know what you guys at the end of the day you share with the status so <laughs> they were just all getting opportunities and i'm grateful for them um, and i'm fine anyway so thank god well so i come here next time thank you guys for watching this video i hope that you learned a thing or two and i will see you guys in my next video bye